I have this memorized because I made the game. Oh, that was, I thought that we were at... I lost track of how far along we were... Now it's gonna all mess me up. I feel stupid now. Alright, left, right, down. Left, right, down, spin. Left, right, down, spin, down. Left, right, spin, down, spin, right. What? I don't know. <laughs> left, right, down, spin. Down, right, up. Got through that. There's treasure up over there, but let's speed through here. Except get this treasure. Ten tails. I should probably put more on those. Sweet fruit. Sweet. Alright, oop, hold on. Let me back up a bit. And then I'm gonna create a quick save here. Quick save! Completed! Because here comes the next challenge. Alright, so here's the thing about RPG Maker 1. It doesn't actually have a timer system. So you can't actually say, hey, 21 seconds, you fail. In fact, if I just stood here, also don't go for that treasure chest as a decoy. If I just stood here, nothing would happen until I reached the finish line. So your question is, how do I keep track of whether I made it in less than 21 seconds? I'll show you in a moment. Alright. So, let's head over here. And here's why you shouldn't go after this chest. Drew went after that chest. It was hilarious. Alright. So, let's go out of here. Let's first uh, show... Where is it? Green Grove 3? Or was it 2? Oh! You'll see all these duplicate events. This is the beginning of the game where it was raining. I had all these rain icons sitting here. So it's three we want. Yep, here we go. So basically I had to keep track of how far along in the game we were and whether certain rounds were there and it was slightly complicated. But here, here is the fun thing. So, let's see. Which one is it? Yeah, here it is. This is a victory thing. You have to step on this tile in order to finish the race. If you try starting going down here, or if you go this way, it'll tell you wrong way. You're pretty much forced to go this way. Now, here's the thing. Down here, there are three events. 13 and it's two duplicates. They use this graphic. It is Object 39 Color 3. It is an invisible block. Now here's the thing. Events with graphics, if they stand on top of an event without a graphic, the graphic event takes priority. So, 
while you're wandering around up here. These events are set to chase you, and they are slowly creeping up over to here. And if you take so long that they cross this event before you get back, you'll step on them, and then step on this, and that will trigger the loss. And I'm not entirely sure whether my instru uh, my what I was saying about event graphic priority to it is important. But anyway, so that's pretty much how this works. If these get over here, you step on them, and that tells this event that you lost. Now, you do eventually get over here where they would probably try walking back in this direction. But I tested it. I had, for testing, what I did was have these actually have a graphic. That way, whenever I get over here in the fastest possible time, I would be able to tell whether they actually got up here. Now, this event here, this is grass. They cannot step on the grass. And the reason they, that I have this grass here is that way they actually start walking here. And I believe the way it was set up, if these weren't here, I would be able to get over here fast enough that at, that maybe only one of these events would be able to make it here. And if this, if that one event managed to take a step just as I'm taking a step down here, I would not trigger it. So with this here, even if you get over here as fast as possible, you would still contend with two of these events and you'd still step on one of them. So that's how that works. It is a pretty clever way of handling it, I think. So let's move on. To the third and final minigame. Oh my! Those ghosts are blue like him! Alright, so basically, now you see how those little icons there on the left, those are sound waves. That indicates that you're hearing from your left ear, which means he is over to the left. Because you know, he's talking while your eyes are closed, you're obviously going to hear where he is. Of course, he doesn't understand that. Let's see. This time it's on the right side. And let's see here. Oh! It's uh, echoing from both... Uh, we're hearing it from our both both of our ears, which means he's in front of us. Now, it is also possible... This is actually randomized. It is not the same one every time. So he might be this one, he might be this one, this one, that one, that one. Uh, nope, you can't leave. Just checking. And mix all, hmm. Now, if he was to the far left or to the far right, it would be three sound waves instead of just two. So, we know it's this guy. Yoink. All right, let's not go that way. Except we have to, because I'm too lazy to program the areas back there to have this song. 
But that's okay, I put a save point right here. And a couple, oops. Oh yeah, that's right. Squirrels. You're dead. Trust me, you're dead. It doesn't look like you're dead, but you're dead. And that battle there has three spiders, which would hurt. Alright. Nice treasure here. Means there's a boss battle coming up. Oh yeah, I forgot to point out, when you get into a battle, it does that dun thing, which makes the boss, uh, which makes the battle song start over. So every time you go into a battle, even if it's the same song that's already playing, yeah. Now, this fight. This is the battle where things actually start getting tough. These things will kill you. Unless you cheat. Onward to Death Cave. Now here's another thing. This is another spot where the opening took place with all the raindrops, but there was some issue going on with these guys not wanting to talk because they were standing on a raindrop event, so it's like I was trying to talk to the raindrop event. So I just copied this map over to the, and the, over to another one and had the rain events go there and then it's just these guys here. Treasure off in that direction, and then we go over here to exit the level. Oh wait, no, that was before. That was before I rearranged the world map. Now we go this way because used to be Death Cave was to the left of Green Grove. Now it's to the north. Now should I continue? Yeah, I'll continue, just to point out one thing. This is a sample map. All those boulders, the trees, they're events. It kind of looks ugly on the cave entrance, because... Well, oh yeah, now I remember. Basically, the cave there also wasn't there. Basically, the I had black events, like the invisible event, except instead of invisible, it was a square black block. And then, it's like that. It, where all those boulders are covering up a piece part of the map where it's like where the shading is there in the middle there. And I didn't want that, so I put a transparent black on that part and had the boulders cover up, so it actually does look more like the entrance to the cave and not like there's a hole in the wall. Now I will not actually continue this scene because this is where things get slightly spoilerific, but I will go ahead and cave intro. Oh yeah, this is the entrance to the first room of the cave. Now where is the actual cave cave? Cave entry, here we are. So this is how it actually looks. All these are trees. And you can tell these events are the ghosts that were wandering, the ghosts that from the beginning of the game, and also we have events that were. Where are they? I know you're here. Huh. I know that this is the map where the two people were here. Maybe they maybe they aren't starting events. Maybe they're 
Yeah, there we go. This is events change graphics. So basically, every time I blacked out the screen, by the way, it's like the cutscene with the with the old man, where I had to keep switching events every time the screen went black. Now let's go to maps. Maps 21, right? So you can see here, this is how it originally looks. You can see that line of scraggly at the bottom of the wall, and I want that's what I want to cover up. Because there is no actual cave door here. I had to improvise. Now the last thing I want to talk about, because no, I'm not going to go through the whole demo. Well, what I've got anyway. Uh, where is it? What do I want to do? I forget. Oh yeah. Death Cave. It's a big old place. It uses a sample map. So some of these are actually scenery. Is this scenery? No, that's not scenery. Which one is... Okay, this is scenery. But anyway, you'll notice these crosses here. Um... I'm going to add a link to this video to an older video showing off a really intricate puzzle I have. A light puzzle. Basically, the enemies in this dungeon, some of them are zombies, and zombies are extremely strong. You can't kill them at all, unless you shine light on them. Now, you can't actually guide an, an, a zombie into the light. So my idea was to have you go to this room with a bottle. Now there's light in here. And, well, the light in here isn't really important. But basically, you go up here, you fill the bottle, and you go into the light. Use it as a key item. And what that would do was, is as the water pours out, the warm light would cause the water to evaporate into a mist, which would reflect the light all around the room, making it bright enough. And the zombies, they're weak against light, so once they're hit with that light, it would kill them. So, what's going on here is this event, once you step on it, it says, oh hey, you're on the light. Go ahead and use the item. And these events say, you're no longer on the light. Don't you dare use that item on the light. And that's how that works. Also, in the spring, this is something that Drew missed. But, the spring also heals you. You've got these inner events, and you've got the outer events. The outer events heal you. If you press X, you get healed. If you use the key item on these events, on the other hand, this is how you fill the bottle, which makes it like the bridge at the beginning of the game where if you're standing here and facing down, you can fill the bottle in the middle of the sand. But most people playing aren't going to think of that. They're just going to go straight for the water's edge. Also, just a little thing here, in case I actually do finish this version of the game. Let's see, zombie room, is this it? No. Although this is a fun room. S let's see, no, that's not it. Right of Spring, this room here. That will actually lead somewhere. Eventually, midway through the game, you will be able to return to Death Cave, and there's some secret stuff here. Uh, that magic crystal, the crystal with the random effect, this is where you will be able to find it. Now, in the Matacon demo, I actually had it in an ice cave, which is the first dungeon you, dungeon you go into on the second scenario card, but that was just for demo purposes, for demonstration purposes. So, yeah. So, technically, this is an optional dungeon. The enemies here will be stronger when you return, and I guess there will, there will be a bridge here, and you'll be able to go further into the cave, and that's how you get the crystal. The magic crystal, the magic shard. Alright, is there anything else I want to discuss? 
Oh, right. There is one thing I want to discuss. And it's especially important. Is this game going to be made for RPG Maker 1? I don't know. Here's the thing. Uh, RPG Maker XP, that came out in like 2005, I want to say. By that point, I was not quite as far as I am now with this game. I wasn't, I didn't have the Ice Cave, I was still on the first scenario card. The thing of it is, by the time RPG Maker XP came out, I was used to these graphics and these characters, I'm used to Seth looking like that and I'm used to Mick looking like that, I'm used to Sarah looking like she did. And it's like, when I looked at RPG Maker XP's graphics, first off it didn't have a world map system and I didn't want to deal with no world maps. But also, the characters, they did not look like these. And it's like, it was very difficult for me to replace how these characters look. Because none, because this is just how I'm used to them. And it's like, changing their graphics to look completely different, I it just wouldn't work out. Not to mention there were certain enemies that were absent from... That I, were use, that I was using here, like planned enemies planned enemies and especially bosses like the panther that's not an enemy in RPG Maker XP so that's why I didn't really move it to RPG Maker XP same deal with RPG Maker 2 for the PS2 I started working on it but I never really got very far at all because even though I could get the characters to look right it didn't provide the right enemy models to be using and RPG Maker 3 well, that's RPG Maker 3. Now here we have RPG Maker VX Ace, which will have a character generator, which will pretty much get rid of the problem of making characters look like this. Well, they'll still be squat, but I'll at least be able to have them resemble these characters. The question is, will RPG Maker VX have, say, this as a monster. Will it have this guy, this guy, and this guy? It's got to have certain enemy characters. I don't know. I don't know what RPG Maker VX Ace will have as enemy characters. I'm hesitant to actually borrow actual enemy characters that because there is a community for custom graphics and it's like do I really want to use them? Will they match my graphics that I have here? Or rather, will they match the graphics that are already in RPG Maker VX? Because I don't want to look, the graphics to look all mixed up and stuff, you know? So that's a big determining factor on whether I move Slayer's Reign to RPG Maker VX Ace. Another issue is... I spent over a hundred dollars on 12 memory cards for Slayer's Reign, expecting that I would finish Slayer's Reign for RPG Maker 1. And I was planning on like having the memory cards, each memory card being dedicated specifically for Slayer's Reign. And eventually I would like create my own little box with my own custom labels and it would be my own personal box set for Slayer's Reign. Not something that it would sell, just for, it's like I said, personal. And it's like, if I give up on RPG Maker 1, then that, all these memory cards, they're gonna go to waste. And that's kind of a shame. And then here's another deal. There is RPG Maker Sukuru 4, which we're now calling RPG Maker 4, because somebody because it's been translated. There is a translation patch for it. And RPG Maker 4 has the most awesome battle system. Period. It's better than Final Fantasy's battle system. Or at least the older Final Fantasies before Final Fantasy... Actually, screw it. It's better than Final Fantasy battle system. Period. 
And RPG Maker 4, well, it released between, in Japan between RPG Maker 1 and R RPG Maker 2. Uh, this here... This here. Uh, come on, load the tile screen. RPG Maker. This is RPG Maker. In Japan, it is RPG Sakuru 3. It is the third game in the series. And RPG Maker 2 is actually RPG Sakuru 5. But anyway, because of that, RPG Maker 4 is very similar to RPG Maker 1. Because it's also on the PlayStation 1 and was pretty much a direct sequel. Except it has, instead of a... Let's turn that off. So there goes the memory of the game. Since I went all the way to the title screen. That doesn't happen with RPG Maker 4. You go to the title screen of RPG Maker 4 and go back into the editor. It'll still have your game. But anyway... The biggest difference between RPG Maker and RPG Maker 4 is this has a first person battle system and RPG Maker 4 has a battle system like the Final Fantasy games with the ATB gauge and the side view. And it's real slick. And it also looks a lot better and it sounds, well, it sounds anyway. But it has this, also has a similar style of characters which would make Moving Slayer's reign to it pretty easily. The problem is, because RPG Maker 4, you'd have to import it and then patch it. Which means, n the user base is the smallest out of all the RPG Makers. Which means, if I did make Slayer's reign for that, only a very few people would be able to play that. If I kept Slayer's reign on this... Very few people would be able to play it, but more people than RPG Maker 4. If I move to VXAs, well, that means anybody could play it. Because in order to play these games on the console RPG Makers, you actually have to own the console RPG Makers. What it stores on the memory cards is just the information here in these menus. It does not store the graphics. It does not store the battle system. It does not store the music, it just stores the basic information and then RPG Maker loads the information to use in the game. Which re really restricts the user base. Especially since you need an emulator in order to play them or you need some sort of special device in order to play the games on a memory card. Transfer them from the PC to the memory card. So therein lies my dilemma. Do I keep Slayer's Reign on here and use these memory cards I bought? Do I move to RPG Maker 4, have a better battle system? I'd still be able to use these memory cards because I can mod my PS2 to play P uh, imported PS1 games. And, but I'd have a smaller user, even smaller user base than on here. Or do I just move to RPG Maker VX Ace? I'll tell you what, I heard one particular song on VX Ace, and it sounds perfect for the final battle theme. So, yeah, I've got a tough decision to make. It ul it ultimately depends on what RPG Maker f uh, VX Ace provides for me. I mean, that song is almost a shoe-in for the final, uh, for bringing Slayer's Reign to Ace. It ultimately depends on what the enemies look like. It has to provide the right enemies. Anyway, I'm pretty much done. I showed off all I want to show off. Basically, what I showed off here is half of what I had completed. The interesting thing is, I mentioned earlier, I started RPG, or I started Slayer's Reign on RPG Maker 2000. I made it further with RPG Maker 2000. As you can tell, though, I have been putting quite a bit of effort into this game. I am taking this game seriously. You saw the stuff I was doing. A lot of the stuff I was showing off, most people didn't think were pos was even possible with RPG Maker 1. Like the race thing, 
the custom menu, that's a big thing. And the opening cinematic especially. Oh, and the cave cinematic with the flashback with the ghost with the old man. I am definitely putting some effort into this. Now the story, you couldn't really see a whole lot of how serious it's going to be, but yeah, it's going to be epic. There's not going to... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to really spoil anything. But yeah, I am putting a lot of effort in this game. I really want to release it. This is my dream game. So, whichever RPG Maker I put it on, it's going to be good no matter what. The tricky thing is figuring out what I'm going to do with the game. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Oh, and the Slayers... The the, the 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 dragon cave yeah that's pretty much where the story really starts picking up i would have shown it off but nah uh, i mean that part was in the demo but so obviously lots of people have seen that part in fact drew played past the demo and showed off that part but for the sake of this demonstration that's all i really want to show if you want to see what's further in the game uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to link to the Let's Play that Drew did in at least one of these videos. Anyway, that's it.